What's this? A letter for me. Welcome to another episode of Remember the Great Sports Through the Mail Thursdays. Today I'm going to share with you three recent returns that I just got back. And this first one is postmarked from Cincinnati, Ohio. And it is a former Chicago White Sox pitcher, Bill Long, on one, two, 87 Fleer update, a third, 91 tops as a Cub, and a fourth is a Hawaii Islander in one of his minor league stints in his career. So let me tell you about Bill Long and his career in baseball. Bill Long attended Muller, the famous Muller High School in Cincinnati, Ohio. He played high school football and baseball there and actually went to the Miami University of Ohio where he also played baseball and football for the team. The San Diego Padres selected Long with the second round pick in the 1981 MLB draft out of Miami University of Ohio. Long spent the 1981, 82, 83, and 84 seasons in the Padres minor league systems, posting a 14-5 record in 1984. Well, going into the 1985 season, Long was traded along with Ozzie Guillen, Tim Lohler, and Luis Salazar to the Chicago White Sox for then all-star pitcher Lamar Hoyt. So this is how Lamar Hoyt became a San Diego Padre and how Ozzie Guillen became a Chicago White Sox. Well, his first year with the White Sox, the White Sox placed him in AAA and he responded with a 13-6 record starting 22-25 starts for the White Sox AAA affiliate. Well, they gave him a call up where he got to start three games for the club, appearing in four. However, the Major League debut didn't go too well, where he posted an ERA over 10. Well, going in 1986, the White Sox returned him back to the minor leagues, where he would spend the entire 1986 season getting acclimated with the club. Well, starting the 1987 season, he would only spend two games in AAA for the White Sox, before they called him up and he became a permanent fixture of their starting rotation in 87. Well, he responded with an 8-8 record that year for the White Sox, and going into 1988, he again made the big league club. However, he just started 18 of 47 games for the team, posting a win-loss record of 8 wins and 11 losses and an ERA of 4.08. Well, in 1989, he would again spend most of his time in the bullpen, have a couple occasional starts, so a spot starter, where he'll post a 5 and 5 record with a 3.92 ERA. Going into the 1990 season, he would start the year with the White Sox, appearing in just four games for the club. However, on April 30th, 1990, he would be traded to the Chicago Cubs, where he would finish up the season with the team. Despite posting a 6 and 1 record with the club, the Cubs did not resign him, and instead he signed with the Montreal Expos. In 1991, he appeared in just three games with the Expos and spent 10 games in their AAA affiliate. And after the 1991 season, the Expos released him from his contract. After that, Bill Long did not play professional baseball again. And according to his Wikipedia page, he moved back to Kentucky and actually became a middle school teacher after his pitching career in the majors. So that's pretty cool. He spent that time in the majors, went back, and became an educator. And I don't know if he's still teaching or if he's retired from that profession as well at this point. But very cool to add Bill Long to my collection. And I just want to point out, he played in Hawaii for a season. I mean, if you were sent to AAA, oh darn, I got sent to Hawaii. I mean, that's almost better than being in the majors in my opinion. (laughs) Like, okay, I'll go pitch an entire season in Hawaii. Nothing wrong with that, even if it is minor league baseball. So, we'll move on to the next one. Alright, so this next one is former Baltimore Oriole Bill Swaggerty on 1, 2, 1985 tops. And a third minor league card with the Omaha Royals. So, very happy to add another all-time Orioles autograph to the collection. So, let me tell you about Bill Swaggerty. Swaggerty, a right-handed pitcher from Florida, attended Stetson University in Florida, 
and was drafted in the 26th round of the 1979 draft by the Baltimore Orioles. Swaggerty would pitch 1979 through 1983, working his way up through the Orioles system. He would be a spot starter from in his AAA appearances, but mainly was used as a reliever while he was in double A and single A. Well, in 1983, he got called up to the majors in seven games where he posted a 1-1 one one record and an ERA of 2.91. Eventually, that team would go on to win the World Series. 1984, he would split time between the majors and Baltimore. He would post a 3-2 and two record for the Orioles in 84. In 1885, he would spend the majority of the season in AAA for the Orioles, where he would start 26-30 games, just appearing in one at the majors. 1986 would almost be a repeat of 1985, where he would spend the majority of the season 26 games in AAA and just one in the majors. Well, after the 86 season, the Orioles let him go, and he signed a minor league deal with the Kansas City Royals. He was assigned to their AAA affiliate in 1987, never getting a call up to the major leagues in 87, and would repeat this again in 1988, Despite posting a 10-5 and record, he never got called up to the majors by the Royals. After that 1988 season, at 31 years old, Swaggerty did not pitch again. And that's pretty much all that I have uh, moving forward. Um, it's postmarked from Florida, so I'm going to assume he moved back to Florida, you know, his home state, and embarked on a second career of some sort, just like Bill Wong became a school teacher. So... Very happy to add Bill Swagger to see the collection. Another one for the all-time Orioles collection, and we'll move on to the next one. All right, so this next one, a lot of you probably remember if you collected cards back in the 80s. And this is former shortstop Kurt Stillwell on one, two, three, and four. And Kurt Stillwell was an all-star shortstop for a season. And I actually happen to have his single A affiliate trading card. I Again, this is just one of those random cards that I happen to have in my collection. Um, I have no idea why, but I do. So I was able to send these to Kurt, and he was able to sign them for me. And we'll talk about Kurt Stillwell and his career real fast. Kurt Stillwell is the son of Ron Stillwell, who played for the Washington Senators back in the 1960s. Stillwell played high school baseball at Thousand Oaks High School in Thousand Oaks, California, and was selected in the first round, the second overall pick, in the 1983 draft by the Cincinnati Reds. At just 18 years old, Stillwell would play for the Reds' rookie ball affiliate, and he would work his way up to single A the next year, which is that Cedar Rapids card, and then would make the jump to AAA in 1985. Well, he would start the year in 1986 and, and just after 10 games in AAA he would get called up to the majors at 21 years old to make his major league debut on April 13, 1986. Stillwell would pretty much appear in 104 games that year in 1986 for the Reds and posted some pretty decent numbers on the field but was more known for his defensive skills. In 1987 he would be the starting shortstop for the Reds in 131 games and posted a pretty fair batting average, you know, batting 258 and also, you know, hitting four home runs. Well, there was this young guy named Barry Larkin, though, that was also in the Reds system at that time. And in order to make room for Barry Larkin to play shortstop to embark on his Hall of Fame career, basically, the Reds decided to trade along with Ted Power. Kurt Stillwell to the Kansas City Royals for Danny Jackson. Well, Danny Jackson would come to the Reds and be a starter for many seasons, but Stillwell would seize this opportunity and would appear in 128 games in 1988 and make the all-star team for the Kansas City Royals. Stillwell would play solid defense for the Royals and would remain their shortstop through the 1991 season. After the 1991 season, he would sign as a free agent with the San Diego Padres. He would only spend one season and a half with the Padres before the Padres decided to re release him during the 1993 season. 
A week later, he would sign with the California Angels and finish out the year in 1993 with the Angels. Well, after the 93 season, he would return to the Reds organization and in 1994 would spend ju just 93 games in AAA for the Reds, which was a strike-shortened season. He would come back in 1995, manning AAA for the Reds, but did not get a chance to get back up to the majors with them. After the 95 season, he would then sign with the Texas Rangers, and the Rangers gave him a backup role, where he appeared in 46 games for them in 1996, and also a couple games in AAA that year as well. After that season in 1996, however, Stillwell retired as a professional baseball player and moved back to California. So, again, not really sure what he did post-playing career, but very, very happy to add Kurt Stillwell to the collection. I am very also happy to get a couple other autographs of guys I've never gotten before, and Bill Long as well, and also happy to get Bill Swaggerty back as well, and get one more all-time Orioles card signed in my collection. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I look forward to your comments below, and I hope you learned something about some players from the 1980s that maybe you didn't know much about. Look forward to your comments below, and happy collecting. <laughs>